Uko Save me by your name By your power Defend my cause Uko Hear my prayer Give ear to the words Of my mouth In the name of the Father And of the Son And of the Holy Spirit The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And this Mass is offered for the sick and housebound of our parish. And during this Mass, we especially pray for the repose of the soul of Mrs. Sarama and George, who passed away today in Kerala. We also offer our prayer for condolences to the bereaved members of the family. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in our life, doing good things is very, very fundamental. As followers of Christ our Lord, who went on doing good wherever he went, we are called to do good. Come what we. There will be always people accusing us. There will be always people finding fault with the good things that we do. However, if we know for sure that we do what the Lord wants us to do, we can keep going. So in a special way today, we ask God for this particular grace, just like the Lord Jesus, who went about doing good, we also may do good in whatever circumstances we are in. And for those moments of our failures, to do good in our life. And for those moments of doing evil, we feel sorry and ask for God's pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, God's blessed Mary, ever virgin, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord Hamasi, Christ Hamasi, Lord Hamasi. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, grant we pray that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom The godless say to themselves, with their misguided reason. Let us lie in wait for the virtuous man, since he annoys us and opposes our way of life, reproaches us for our breaches of the law and accuses us of being false to our upbringing. He claims to have knowledge of God and calls himself a son of the Lord. Before us he stands, a reproof to our way of thinking. The very sight of him weighs our spirits down. His way of life is not like other men's. The paths he treads are unfamiliar. In his opinion, we are counterfeit. He holds aloof from our doings as though from filth. He proclaims the final end of the virtuous as happy and boasts of having God for his 
Father. Let us see if what he says is true. Let us observe what kind of end he himself will have. If the virtuous man is God's son, God will take his part and rescue him from the clutches of his enemies. Let us test him with cruelty and with torture, and thus explore his gentleness of his, and put his endurance to the proof. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, since he will be looked after. We have his word for it. This is the way they reason, but they are misled. Their malice makes them blind. They do not know the hidden things of God. They have no hope that holiness will be rewarded. They can see no reward for blameless souls. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Lord turns his face against the wicked to destroy their remembrance from the earth. The just call at the Lord hears and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. Those whose spirit is crushed, he will save. Many are the trials of the just man, but from them all the Lord will rescue. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. He will keep guard over all his bones. Not one of his bones shall be broken. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants. Those who hide in him shall not be condemned. The Lord is close to the broken heart. Please stand to greet the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Now, now, it is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart, for I am all tenderness and compassion. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus stayed in Galilee. He could not stay in Judea because the Jews were out to kill him. As the Jewish feast of tabernacles drew near, after his brothers had left for the festival, Jesus went up as well, but not privately, without drawing attention to himself. Meanwhile, some of the people of Jerusalem were saying, Isn't this the man they want to kill? And here he is, speaking freely, and they have nothing to say to him. Can it be true? The authorities have made up their minds that he is the Christ. Yet we all know where he comes from. But when the Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. Then as Jesus taught in the temple, he cried out, Yes, you know me. And you know where I came from. Yet I have not come of myself. No, there is one who sent me, and I really come from him. And you do not know him. But I know him, because I have come from him, and it was he who 
who sent me. They would have arrested him then, but because his time had not yet come, no one laid a hand on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That wonderful first reading from the Book of Wisdom we heard. How the wicked plot against the virtuous. In the gospel we see how people who are wicked-minded plot against Jesus our Lord and they plan to kill him. And the gospel so beautifully clearly explained how Jesus went on doing good. Wherever he went, he went about doing good. And even through his own virtuous life, he was able to draw so many closer to him. And even when the wicked planned to plot against him, he had the courage to keep on doing the good work that he was called to do. And we heard in the responsorial psalm today, the Lord is close to the broken hearted. Obviously, the Lord Jesus, during his time here on earth, was always for those broken-hearted. He went about consoling and comforting all those who were sick, all those who were in need of his help. And what gave him that courage to do the goodness which he was called to do? Certainly, just as we have said in the Gospel today, it is the knowledge of the Father and also knowing that why he was sent here on earth that made him do the good works and was able to carry on doing even when he was aware that he would be killed. And in our life, my dear brothers and sisters, we also should constantly examine ourselves how well are we knowledgeable about God and how much do we really know Christ our Lord? It is the deeper interior knowledge of the person of Christ whom we all adore, whom we all follow in our life that will enable us to do the good things. Certainly, when we lead a life of virtue, there will be always people who plot against us. However, what would give us the courage is nothing but the clear knowledge that we have God who has called us to do this. And so today, maybe we can take time to reflect deeply of how well our knowledge is about God and how well do we journey with Christ our Lord who went on doing good. We should also remember today the Lord is close to the broken hearted and we as his followers are called to be close to those broken hearted. And in our own houses we may not be able to go out and do good but how can we be close to the broken hearted in a job of communication. Can we communicate with people who really need our words, who really need our comforting and consoling words at this time? Can we think of people who really need our praise and offer special praise for them? Can we also speak about Christ our Lord and share the knowledge of God to those whom we communicate in our everyday life? May the Lord Jesus, who had the courage to carry on the great work given to him by his Father, may he inspire us to do the great work which he calls us to do. For this we pray during this Holy Eucharist.
Blessed are you, O Lord, all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be the Lord forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be your Lord God. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hearts for the praise and glory of His of our God and for all His holy church. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by His mighty power. And lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks to our Holy Father, our mighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, praise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and pass tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May all voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the form of all holiness. Make holy day for this which we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and yet willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer the Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and from the divine teaching, we may say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from. And save from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the peace. In accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, He who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Dear friends, there are times when people are unable to receive the body and blood of Christ through illness or due to their personal disposition. Even though some may not receive sacrament of communion, all are united by the Holy Spirit. The traditional idea of spiritual communion is an important one to remember and reaffirm at this time. A deep spiritual communion is possible even when we do not share together the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ. As I request you to join me in this prayer, I also ask you to make this prayer your own and may the Lord Jesus come into your heart spiritually. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. In Christ we have redemption by His blood and forgiveness of all sins in accord with the riches of His grace. So dear friends, we continue to pray for each other. We also especially pray for all those affected by this coronavirus. And please do join us this evening for prayer at 8 p.m. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with form ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life of love. Thanks be to God.